Hello everyone, last week I posted a video on reverse engineering this long bar type ink screen. I mentioned you can categorize ink screens into two different types, one with controller and one without. So this screen featured in the last video has the controller, but obviously there is also a tons of um, ink screens that you can find on the market that doesn't have a controller. So this time I brought in a screen in that category. A quick recap. Uh, the big difference is that with controller, it has internal RAM, so you can use a microcontroller to send image through slowly, usually over a serial bus like I2C or SPY. But for screens without controller, it doesn't have internal buffer, so the processor or an external display controller has to send an image at the screen refresh rate consistently, usually over a parallel bus. What it means is that pretty much all these controllers less ink screens use the same protocol. So I only need to know the pinout to use a generic driver to drive them. Kind of like VGA, so let's get started. So let's first take a look at the screen. So this is a 6 inch screen with the model number listed here as the ED060XC8. Um, I've already looked up online, I didn't find anything useful like the specifications or pinout. There is people asking like can you hook up this exact screen onto Raspberry Pi or how can you drive it, um, but there is no answer. So I have to work on my own. I didn't talk about this last time, but let's take a look at what this model number really means. So the first letter E means normal ink, other possibilities including P, which means LCD, and A, which means ASAP. The second letter means the specific type. D generally means normal glass-based screen. T and S are flexible screen. L is black and white and red three-color screen or black, white, yellow three-color screens. But there are exceptions like some color screens also use D instead of L. And C is the full color screen. The next three digits represent the diagonal size. 060 means 6 inch, and 312 means 31.2 inch. The next letter represents the resolution. Note they use T for everything non standard. And the last two is somewhat related to revisions and generations, but I don't know the details. So from the model, we know like this is obviously a 6 inch screen with an 1024 by 758 resolution. So what's next? This screen uses a 35 pin connector, while other 6 inch screens typically use 39 pin or 34 pin connector. Based on my search, it seems like the only other screen use this connector is ED060TC1 used on Kindle Voyage. I don't have one, but one potential solution is to buy a Kindle Voyage, use Multimeter and Logic Analyzer or Oscilloscope to reverse engineer the pinout, then hope these two screens would have the same pinout. Or is there another way? Well, maybe. While it uses a different pinout compared to other 6 inch screens, it might still use the same chip. Um, of course, these two screens, they use the different chips. As you can see, they are um, of different sizes. But, well, there, there might be I can find a screen that uses the same chip. And even if I don't know the pinout of the chip, I can still derive the pinout from a screen with a datasheet. Means if I know the pinout here, then I can trace the FPC, then I know the pinout of this chip. Then, if these two screens use the same chip, I just apply that pinout to here, then I reverse engineer this FPC, I finally derive the pinout of this connector. Sounds like a plan. So do I have a screen that matches? So yes, I did find a screen with a typical 34 pin connector that looks like it used the same driver chip. You can see they are of the same position and also the same size. This is an ED060XC3 from a Kindle Paperwhite 1. So yeah, now I can start reverse engineering it. And the steps are straightforward. Scan both screens, tracing the FPC connectors, and now I have a pinout for this screen. As a sanity check, I can use the multimeter to make sure all the signal lines are indeed connected somewhere. But to really know if this is correct or not, is to try it out. So I designed a simple adapter board using KiCad, got it built at JLCPCB, then soldered it. Now I can hook that up to my ink driver board for testing. I will talk about the driver board in another video in the future. But for now, it just works. This is about this video. 
If you liked it, please consider like and subscribe to the channel or support me on the Patreon and I will see you next time. Bye.